Hi, today I'm to show the expandable tunnel bore design that I created. A tunnel bore is basically a flying machine that is able to fly inside a cave, pick up some blocks, return to the default position again where the blocks are processed, and then the whole yeah, process is started over and over again, and over time you would drill an infinitely long hole inside of a block formation. Similar concepts have been shown before, most notably by Cube Hamster, who even made a tunnel bore before the observer blocks got added, which was super impressive and also Emerald Fire showed a really nice tunnel bore design. So what I brought new to the table was to make this expandable, so you could add the same modules over and over again on the side and yeah, make the hole a lot wider. So I want to quickly explain how this machine works. So the main flying machine here is controlled by ETA's self-returning engine. So once it hits an obstacle, it would reverse the direction. And those uh, flying machines are pretty much independent from each other, um, so they wouldn't collide or anything if, for example, you have a cave. But the yeah, caves are still an issue with the flying machine uh, because it would slow down the process a lot. Uh, so once the main flying machine is at the default position, the stone blocks are picked from the slime box here, so they can be further processed here. Uh, what's important with this machine here, which is launched now, is that Double pistons here only activate every second block. So we do this by pushing those blocks twice and this only activates the piston here every second block. Okay, and then a, yeah, basically a third flag machine is launched that pushes the one white slice up and it's further yeah, sent to a TNT blast chamber. Here we get a leg spike because all of those opaque blocks create a lot of light updates and yeah that's pretty much it so I chip in the TNT from the side because in this case um, was a yeah, the best way probably to do it it's pretty much lossless even I also saw the delay between the TNT uh, explosions that's useful to avoid uh, some item loss because if you would chip in the TNT at the same time then um, items that are created by the first TNT block could be destroyed by the second TNT block even if they explode in the same game tick I also want to quickly talk about the uses of this machine in survival. So it's definitely not feasible to use this machine to mine diamonds in the overworld, for example. There's a bunch of problems that it just yeah, make this impossible or not really uh, interesting to use. First issue is that lava and water could update the detector size of the observers. It's probably possible to avoid this issue by placing blocks in front of the detector sites, but there's a yeah a lot of other problems that really can't be solved. For example, um, obsidian would definitely break any flying machine. Then there's the issue with uh, gravity blocks that um, yeah wouldn't get picked up, or just over yeah would really slow down the process a lot. Also, it's uh, really slow by default the machine. Um, so every time you go one block further, the machine takes one second more to advance to the next layer. And after about 100 uh, layers, yeah, the machine is already so slow that it's not really interesting anymore. Um, then there's also the issue that lava and water could create new blocks. So it's definitely not feasible to run this machine unsupervised to mine diamond ore. Also, it would take a long time to set this up and so on. Um, so it's not really interesting for that use. The only really use that comes to my mind for survival would be to mine out um, a cave in the end dimension uh, in those endstone islands. That's really the only use I could think about this machine at the moment, which is feasible. So mostly made this machine as a proof of concept. All right, so if you're interested in this machine and want to yeah, check it out, there's a world download. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.